ladies and gentlemen, this woman wanted to get rid of what she called her double chin. So you see what the end result is and it looks more like a turkey neck than a double chin. Y'all know what I mean? That looks like a turkey neck. Well, it's a shame. She got all them spots all over her and she still got the turkey neck. Well, I'm sure she's not happy. So, according to this report, she paid 500 pounds to get rid of her double chin, but was left looking like an old chicken. Now, I barely leave the house. Yeah, I, if you walk around looking like that, you're definitely going to get stared at. All right, so her name is Jane Bowman. Mm -mm -mm. And she just wanted to get rid of what she called her double chin after losing weight. She was thrilled to discover it would be a simple and quick procedure. Well, that didn't turn out to be the case at all. She's 59 years old. But now Jane from Hampshire who doesn't work because of an illness is warning about the very treatment after she was left a recluse with a neck that looks like an old chicken. She paid 500 pounds, yeah, just for somebody to jack you up. And it's called fibroblast plasma treatment to tighten the skin, but she was left with hundreds of huge unsightly red scars. Jane says, I wish I still had my saggy neck. Well, just looking at the picture, look like you still do. But was better than what I have been left with. This botch beauty treatment left me in agony. So Jane found her therapist on social media and was drawn in by her glowing reviews. Okay. It was so painful. It looks painful. I mean, seriously, it looks like a, wow. It looks painful. It burned like hell. That's what she said. I told the therapist I was in agony, but she didn't seem bothered. She said she had to carry on or it wouldn't work. So when she was getting the procedure done, she was in a lot of pain. Wow, they didn't give you anything for the pain? Later, Jane slathered cream over her neck to ease the burning, but her uh, chest, neck, and face was covered in unsightly brown dots. She immediately contacted her therapist and was offered a light therapy and micro needling, but nothing worked to get rid of the scars. So Furious Jane demanded the therapist's insurance detail. She was fobbed off for months and told, I'm sorry, I can't remember them. <laughs> Uh, this looks like a lawsuit, for real. Some 79% of practitioners reported to Safe Face in 2020 were believed to be uninsured, as it's not a legal requirement. So being that she did not get her insurance detail, she probably did this uninsured. Apparently, over there in the UK, that is allowed. So I don't even know how she's going to be able to sue her. I don't want to go out anymore, Jane says. I'm a recluse because I don't want people to see my horrible scars. I look so ugly. I am so angry. Some 79% of practitioners reported to Safe Face that... Uh, were believed to be uninsured. Wow. So they're just kind of repeating it. 
Wow. I mean, I don't know what to say. That is some serious damage, probably permanent at this point. Non-surgical procedures have exploded in popularity in Britain in recent years with promises of lunch break nose jobs and no downtime uh, tummy tucks luring people in. But with many unregistered beauticians or those with shoddy qualifications performing laser fillers and Botox complaints like Rachel's are sadly not rare. Wow. I mean, if it's happening that much, why are you not shutting these people down? A much needed new law will make it illegal to inject fillers and Botox without a license. But experts argue the government need to enforce existing legislation first. Ashton Collins, director of Save Face, who help people uh, lodge complaints and have a government approved register of clinicians say the existing regulatory framework is flawed and is not enforced. Oh, so they do the same thing that they do over here in the US. If they feel like enforcing the law, they do. If they don't, feel like enfor uh, enforcing it, they don't. That's the same thing they do here. Do it in the UK. There are laws in place currently that ought to safeguard the public from being injected with unlicensed medicines or given Botox injections without a valid prescription. But both issues are rampant and not enough is being done by the regulators to stop it. When it comes to training and insurance, we've investigated a lot of people who just lie, mocking up certificates on their computers, then hanging them on the wall. The, pu uh, the, the public have no means of providing whether they're um, genuine or bogus. Uh, so you're just going to have to be cautious if these are procedures you want to get and do some research to see if you can find out whether the person is licensed or not. But if you're walking in this place, you're doing it at your own risk. All right. Mm -mm -mm. So my advice would be to use Safe Face Register to find a safe treatment. How about not altering yourself? Seriously, how about not altering yourself at all? So over the past six years, Safe Face have registered nearly 8,000 complaints, but only one has resulted in a criminal conviction against the practitioner. So it, it seems like it's very rare for anybody to get into any trouble over in the UK for doing these procedures unlicensed. Ashton says, I think there's definitely a perception. These are silly women who are having treatments out of vanity. It's a trivial thing and the authorities don't think it warrants as much attention as any other form of assault. But the psychological impact it has on people's lives. Yeah, I agree with that. I mean, psychologically, she can't even go outside anymore. She feels ashamed about how she looks. So yeah, the psychological damage that she is feeling, that is permanent. Mm -mm -mm. The number of lost jobs, relationships, and friendships have been immeasurable. People underestimate the very real consequences of a cosmetic procedure gone wrong. I believe that. Mm -mm -mm. So they said in 2020, Save Face received 2,083 complaints about botch beauty treatment. 86% of these were carried out by hairdressers, beauticians, 
or lay people, 81% of the complaints had found uh, their practitioner on social media being drawn in by uh, cheap time, limited offers, before and after pictures, and reality TV endorsements. 93% were not warned of serious complication and believe their treatments were low risk. 79% of these practitioners were believed to be uninsured. So there are more uninsured people than insured people doing these procedures over in the UK. 84% of injured clients were blocked when they tried to complain. 96% of complainants were female and 84% were age 18 to 35 years old. Mm -mm -mm. Wow. This is just goes to show you, do your research before you get anything altered on you. I don't know why people want so many things altered on them, but they do. This is the world we live in. It's a very vain and vanity world, isn't it? So y'all, please tell me what you think about this video. Please leave your comment and subscribe. Don't forget to hit on the notification bell and I'll see you on the next video. Peace, family.